Leader Jeremy Corbyn releasing a video message over the weekend apologising for hurt mm. caused to Jewish people by anti-Semitism in his party. Uh, long running row, of course, of anti-Semitism within Labour and how the party has handled it. Mr Corbyn also said Labour had been too slow in dealing with disciplinary cases. Jewish people have been at the heart of our party and our movement throughout our history. No one should dismiss the concerns they've expressed about what's been happening in the party, the party that I am proud to lead. I'm sorry for the hurt that's been caused to many Jewish people. We have been too slow in processing disciplinary cases of mostly online anti-Semitic abuse by party members. We're acting to speed this process up. People who use anti-Semitic poison need to understand you do not do it in my name or the name of my party. You are not our supporters. And anyone who denies that this has surfaced within our party is clearly actually wrong and contributing to the problem. OK, well, let's talk to Simon Johnson now, Chief Executive of the Jewish Leadership Council. Morning to you. Good morning, Claire. There we go. I mean, it's categorical. Um, he says anybody who's anti-Semitic doesn't do it in his name or the name of the party. Um, that's it, isn't it, really? Does that, that, that finish it all for you? Well, he's apologised before, Claire, but uh, unfortunately he's not addressed why he continues or has shared platforms in the past with Holocaust deniers and anti-Semites. He said that nobody is anti-Semitic in his name, and yet he stayed silent yesterday while his supporters organised a Twitter storm of vile abuse against his deputy, uh, Tom Watson, uh, saying that he was in the pay of the Zionists for speaking out strongly on this particular subject. And what evidence do you have that these people are connected to Jeremy Corbyn? Well, a lot of them come under the Jeremy Corbyn Facebook page. A lot of them are, are motivated by people who are supporters of Jeremy Corbyn. But that Corbyn. doesn't mean that he's actually organised them and asked them to do this. But if we look at Mr Corbyn's own personal behaviour, he says that nobody uh, should deny that there is anti-Semitism in his name. And yet, just a few weeks ago, during an NEC meeting, uh, one of the members of the NEC, Peter Willsman, gave a, an odious and vile rant, uh, saying that there was no evidence against anti-Semitism whilst sitting a few feet away from Mr Corbyn. And I'm afraid he said nothing at all. So although his words yesterday were good, although they were well delivered. I'm afraid we've heard many, many words from him before, and yet these incidents still proliferate. But since that point, Momentum, um, which is a key Jeremy Corbyn supporting campaign group, has withdrawn support for Peter Wilsman, who's uh, seeking re-election to Labour's ruling body. So action has been taken. Well, I, I don't think so. Contrast that with um, the cases of Dame Margaret Hodge and Ian Austin, who are now undergoing disciplinary investigations themselves because they dared to uh, question the situation of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, with Mr Willsman, against whom no disciplinary action has yet been taken. What we are saying is that these words are not enough. Now is the time for real concrete action. What we called for in, in March and in April, and that action that we called for then, including in our meeting with Mr Corbyn, has still not been taken. Well, we have this response from Labour, and part of the statement reads, Jeremy Corbyn asked Labour's, has asked Labour's new General Secretary, Jenny Formby, to make speeding up and strengthening our disciplinary procedures against anti-Semitism her top priority, and to develop a comprehensive programme of political education to increase understanding of anti-Semitism and drive it out of our movement. That's action, isn't it? Well, they, they did say that they would accelerate these cases and deal with them by the end of July. They've failed to meet even that low expectation. As for education, we get into this debate of how you define anti-Semitism. And this is really the heart of this. I think it's something that's ideological. We have called for and continue to call for the full adoption of the internationally accepted definition of anti-Semitism, the IHRA definition. And yet Labour persists in trying to lecture the Jewish community as though it knows more about how to define anti-Semitism than we do by trying to maintain their own code and it's the adoption of this code that has created all the difficulty that we're and, currently facing. And just to bring people up to speed this is what Tom Watson, uh, Jeremy Corbyn's deputy, called for over the weekend and you were saying at the start of this interview that's why Corbyn supporters were on social media um, uh, in their backlash against Mr Watson and yet it seems now that the Labour Party and the executive of the Labour Party are edging towards that. There is movement, there is learning, there is understanding. I mean, surely that's what we all need in politics, isn't it? To actually start at a position, listen, take what your critics are saying on board and shift. 
Well, I wish that that were the case. I mean, they had a, an NEC meeting just a few weeks ago at which the Parliamentary Labour Party proposed that they adopted this full IHRA definition. They didn't adopt it. And as I said earlier, we, we, we had this foul-mouthed rant uh, by Peter Willsman against which nobody in the room said anything. So there is another meeting of the NEC in September. I understand that Labour Party members of Parliament are going to once again propose the full adoption of the IHRA definition. And if Jeremy Corbyn is serious in being a militant ally in the fight against anti-Semitism, then he will stop nitpicking on this definition and ensure that the NEC adopts it. And once they've done that, they can then speed up the cases, they can then enforce uh, this new definition, and we can begin to reduce the incidence of anti-Semitism within the Labour Party. Simon Johnson, Chief Executive of the Jewish Leadership Council, thanks for talking, us on, uh, talking to us on Five Live Breakfast.